What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we are once again talking about seed oils. But before we get into that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment for the algorithm. All right, you know, it's so funny, about seven, eight years ago, when the carnivore diet started getting popular, I did a debate against Sean Baker on the Mark Bell podcast. I remembered starting out saying, you know, my research, my PhD research was funded by the National Dairy Council, the Egg Nutrition Center, and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Never in a million years did I think I would be on a podcast needing to defend the virtues of plants. But here we are. And somehow, it's really funny now, these people will accuse me of being like a, a pro-vegan propagandist. I would invite all of you to go look at my vegan debunks and also check out my Game Changers debunk that was very, very loudly cheered by the low carb and carnivore community when it came out. But as per usual, in their asymmetric application of logic, they approve when something fits their bias and then they disregard it when it does not fit their bias. When it comes to seed oils, the anti-seed oil crowd is the latest round of nutrition religious zealots. And I say that because they have a religious fervor and they defend their position with no evidence to support it. And when I say evidence, I mean direct evidence. I don't mean random rat studies where they give super high doses of seed oils and see, oh yeah, this causes some weird stuff to happen. I am talking about human outcome data. Now, when it comes to seed oils, one of the big things they hang their hats on is that seed oils are gonna get oxidized and they are going to cause inflammation in your body. Now, I've already covered this on this channel many times over. The studies looking at the inflammatory cytokines and comparing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats from omega-6 fatty acids that are derived from seed oils show either neutral or positive effects on inflammation. But we have a new human randomized control trial looking at omega-6 fatty acids, specifically linoleic acid and omega-3s and their effects on inflammation. Now, we pretty much know that omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. That's not gonna be a shock to anybody. But it's very important to point out that linoleic acid specifically has been singled out by people like Paul Saladino as like the worst thing that you can consume. And their logic goes something like this. Linoleic acid can be converted to arachidonic acid and that activates an inflammatory cascade with arachidonic acid then via the Cox enzymes being able to increase inflammation. This is how their logic always goes. Well, if A equals B and B equals C and C equals D, then dude, that's not how metabolism works, okay? So this study was looking at seven weeks of supplementation of either three to four grams of fish oil per day or 15 to 20 grams of linoleic acid per day. And they were looking at different inflammatory cytokines. And these, in the, it was actually quite uh, robust in terms of the number of inflammatory cytokines they looked at, like TNF-alpha, Rantes, MIP-1 beta, MCP-1, and various other inflammatory cytokines. So this study was actually quite robust, looking at a lot of different inflammatory cytokines, like high sensitivity CRP, that's kind of the main one we look for in research, uh, ST, S100AT, S100A8, S100A9, SAA1T, SAA2T, eotoxin, IL8, which is which IL stands for interleukin, MCP1, MIP1-alpha, MIP1-beta, Rantes, TNF, IL1RA, adiponectin, and apolin. Now, adiponectin and apolin, I believe, are actually anti-inflammatory in nature. These other ones are, are pro-inflammatory in nature. What? did they find? There's a lot of stuff here, so I am reading off some of this stuff. When it came to omega-3s versus omega-6s from linoleic acid, for all inflammatory cytokines, there was no statistical difference between those treatments. But both the omega-3s and linoleic acid decreased several inflammatory cytokines. 
So the omega-3s decrease circulating levels of TNF, Rantes, and MIP1 beta. Whereas linoleic acid lowered TNF, Rantes, MCP1, and MIP1 beta. So I think it actually lowered one extra inflammatory cytokine compared to omega-3s. So again, anti-seed oil advocates, where is the data? And if we go back to say someone like Paul Saladino, their hypothesis of linoleic acid increasing arachidonic acid, they actually measured levels of arachidonic acid in the blood. And they found that linoleic acid did not increase levels of arachidonic acid. Because just because a pathway exists does not mean giving the substrate for said pathway is going to increase the output of whatever you're worried about or whatever you want to get. Human biology does not work like that. Sometimes it does, but that's like saying, well, if you just eat more cholesterol, you get more testosterone. It doesn't work like that. There's a lot of steps between A and Z. And it's important to point out that this study was done in people with abdominal obesity. So people who are metabolically unhealthy, right? So if anything, from the things we've heard from the anti seed oil people, these folks should have way worse outcomes than most populations. But they didn't. Linoleic acid, the evil linoleic acid, actually decreased inflammation. Didn't increase it, it decreased it. And decreased it comparably with omega-3s. So once again, anti-seed oil people, I submit to you, where is the data? I think it's very funny because these folks tend to be more like the carnivore low carbish crew and they'll disregard studies that don't fit with their bias, but a internet survey on the carnivore diet with no control group with all self-reported data, they throw up as proof that the carnivore diet is the best diet out there. And again, it's just an asymmetrical application of logic. If there was a, a seed oil internet questionnaire or a vegan internet questionnaire that got published, these folks you would watch their heads explode on social media. If you are going to invoke a certain line of logic, you have to be consistent with that logic. This is basic logic 101. If you say all epidemiology is garbage, then if all of it's garbage, you can't just pick the stuff that you want to use. If you, if, but if you use it, then it all has to be valid and we have to look at the consensus of the data, not just cherry picked studies. All right, guys, if you like these research breakdowns, make sure you check out my research review reps. Link is in the description, and I will catch you next week.